Hey everyone, so today I just want to be showing you guys um, something. I know it's a little bit of a roller system. This is a PS4 Slim that's in here uh, for repair. The hard drive actually went bad on this one. You usually don't see the hard drives go bad too much on the little consoles nowadays because the operating system is very, very light, and even just playing games doesn't really take a whole lot of resources there, at least from the hard drive itself. It's a very lightweight operating system just to play games on. Um, but it can do that, and especially that just mainly sits usually on a desk. And it's not being moved around a lot, so they don't really go about it too much. But we got one in actually here for repair because it needs a hard drive replacement. Now, when it, when you have a hard drive replacement on one of these or any type of operating system, you can even do it for the PS5 as well, that they do need an operating system, right? You need to load an operating system as well as put in a hard drive. And we're going to be just replacing the drive to show you the process of how to load firmware and everything else like that on it. I know it's still kind of hard to get a PS5. It's still hard to just walk into the store, get, leave one with at least a, a reasonable price instead of being all scalped and everything else like that so it's a good way to actually do this i know they're still supporting games on it so that's kind of why we're kind of going over it today i know it's a little bit later but we do uh, we can do these and we can do the drives and show you guys how to do software because it's a little bit interesting you don't just swap out a drive then plug it in and then it just works then you hit an update that's not really how it works you need to actually load a firmware you have to do everything uh, yourself that way it's kind of like installing windows so it's a very similar process now this one because it's a slim it's a very easy way to go um, there's a back here on the back side and we can just do a replacement drive on it so let's just get right into it it's not too difficult and i'll show you guys how to do it at least not too difficult when you have uh, a drive in here so let's get right into it all right so this is a fairly straightforward uh it's not too difficult actually they make it very easy for everyone so what you want to do is you want to flip it up like this and this is going to expose the little side here and i kid you not it slides off that easy <laughs> This little piece it looks like it's clipped but it's really simple and straightforward go off and then now you see there's actually a screw here and this screw is just the only thing that's really holding in the hard drive so we can go ahead and remove that there's one screw and then there's this little and then now there's this little piece of uh i guess you want to call it a little piece of rope or a little lasso whatever you want to do it actually does make this pop up and here's your drive now, you could do a lot of different things. You can replace this drive with one, um, uh, you, like with a regular mechanical drive, because you see that there is a mechanical drive in there, or you can put an SSD. Um, our client is going to be actually putting another mechanical drive. They actually have a one terabyte mechanical drive, I believe, in most of the models. It really depends what you want to put in there as well. Uh, I would recommend getting a solid state drive. They're not too expensive, but I understand. Uh, you have to look at the price per, for performance and everything especially for these type of machines uh, is it really worth it at that point the customer doesn't want to spend extra money obviously for that so we'll go ahead and swap it out for them and you can get that one uh, there's this one is actually the one that came with it I just actually undid this one so I could show you guys but this was a bad one that was in there this is a Seagate um, Rosewood drive uh, we actually have lots of videos talking about that on data recovery if you're interested uh, if you have data on there that's going to be a little bit of a different story but we actually replaced that already in here. Now I just I was like, hey, you know what? I'm gonna go make a video, show you guys. This is what we replaced it in there with. It was a one terabyte mechanical drive. These are a two and a half inch drives, if you're not too sure. And uh, if you have a two and a half inch SSD, you can put that in as well. We recommend maybe getting like a Samsung or a Kusha ones. Those are pretty good too to be doing that. Or if you want to save save some money, we totally understand that. So um, we get it. So it's just a reverse order. You can be put it back, and there's nothing really much to it outside of that. You want to make sure you put it in this way. This makes any oops. We'll make sure you put it in this way if it makes any sense because uh, when you put it in there, it's you need to line it up to make sure that the small one is going to be on the uh, more of the right side. I guess that'll be the best way because it's going in like this. It's going it's going down in like this. So you want to make sure that the back is actually up there. So we we'll be putting this back, and <laughs> yeah, I know guys. Uh, I'm just I just want to show you because I was like, yeah, I guess I'll make a video about this and. I guess because there's a little part that's interesting and that's going to be the next part that we show. Um, and that's just being like uploading the firmware and stuff uh, to having a new, S, a new OS that's there. And it's pretty comparable to what actually the PS5 is going to be doing. So if you guys are interested too, I guess I'll make, I can make a PS5 one uh, whenever we get those in too. They're so loose. Okay, so once it's all done, you can go ahead and put it in. Alright, so once it's done, then you can go ahead and put it in. Should slide in just like that. It fits. It's going to be pretty, a little bit stiff. It won't be able to move. You'll feel actually kind of, not click, but it'll just feel it be a lot 
um, more heavier, whatever in there. Oops, yeah, don't put that in first. Now we, we want to just put back the screw because the screw is an extra piece that's going to hold it in there. to make sure it's not going to fall out of the PS4. Okay. Now we can put this back on. It slides right in there. It's very nice, very easy. And that's really about it. So now what we want to do now is we need to, uh, we have a brand new hard drive in here or an SSD. If you're doing an SSD, I applaud you. I really appreciate that. But obviously for the price of the perform for the price of the PlayStation, it isn't super economically viable to be spending a whole lot of money, especially if you're putting a one terabyte drive. Uh, it's it's a little bit still pricey for that. I mean, you could do it still, but you know, the, the machine isn't cost. But you know, hey, I'm all for it if you want to put an SSD in there. So let's go ahead and show you guys now how to upload the firmware because we have it all, all nice and working, right? Okay, so what you want to do, you want to have a USB, and it's not that much. You probably need like a gigabyte or so. You don't really need a whole lot. Now, when you have any USB, I'm going to be going this way because most people are just going to get a random USB that's um, a little bit newer, maybe 3.0, and has a lot more storage. If you do have trouble with this, what you can do, and uh, this is what typically people are going to do. I have a 64 gigabyte USB here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make this easy for everyone. I'm just going to call this PS4. So you guys don't get confused with the other drives we have here. So now this is our PS4 USB that we want to put our drive data on. And what we have to do is we have to format it a certain way. And when you look at the format, um, it says XFAT and NTFS. Uh, unfortunately, we can't actually use either one of these formats. We have to use something because the PS4 is pretty ancient at this point. Uh, and it has an old Jaguar processor from a long time ago. Uh, we, what we need to do is we need to make sure that we format it a certain way. So we can't do it here. What we need to do actually is go into our command prompt so I don't know why I clicked that but you can hit the search you can hit CMD uh, which would be command prompt um, you can click it and you're gonna get this the scary little um, DDoS mess no it's not DDoS it's just a scary little prompt some people don't actually like dealing with so what you want to do now we want to format the, the USB into an actual um, FAT32 right so how we're gonna do that is what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna use the command there's a certain command that you want to do and it's pretty straightforward. I'll even leave this in the link in the description too. Is that now you want to make sure that you find which um, uh, letter this is because there's lots of different letters. So don't, I actually probably don't want to copy this over. Um, I'm gonna. You can't copy it exactly because you need to make a certain file format this way. So we see here that our PS4 is letter L. Now, if you do this on the wrong one, you're definitely going to format it, and it's going to be pretty bad. So you don't want to do that. So right, so we want to put in this command. For us, again, this is for us. So we will be format um, forward slash fs semicolon fat32, and then you want to put your disk. Now, in our case, it's L. In your case, it might be something else. So if you do this at your own discretion, if you wanted to do that, otherwise you put L. Well, then we can hit enter and see what's going to happen. Okay, and once you hit that command, it's going to go ahead and format it. Probably shouldn't take too long, and we'll see if it'll actually come up here. Now again, you don't want to copy and paste this one, and I'm not, so I'm not going to make a copy and paste thing on it because you can do the wrong drive. I'm just going to be, co I could copy and paste me the first part, and then I'll put like uh, something else there, so you guys, no one's just going to be going ahead and copying it over. So it's going to be doing this is verifying. I don't know why it's take, taking so long, but you'll see this one. It did verify that's a 57 gig, and it's not my eight terabyte, which would have been horrible to do <laughs> at the same time. So uh, after it's done, we'll go ahead and show you guys um, once it's going on. Once it's done, we'll go ahead and show how to download and install it. Okay, so once it's all done, you can see, you can name this kind of whatever you want. We're going to rename this, I guess, for PS4 for now. And it's there. And now what we want to do is we want to double check it again. And we go to properties, we see that's FAT32. Now, again, you could, you, I'm sure you, if you guys already had a FAT32 or an older one, usually around 1 gig anyway. If you had like an older stick or even like a 4 gig stick, it might be already formatted FAT32. So don't worry about the other part then. So now what you want to do is you want to go to um, the website really to go ahead and get off your firmware, right? Because that's what you want. Uh, let's bring it up. Okay, now the fun part. This is the whole reason why we're really making this video because I think some of you guys might want to be doing upgrades, but you're not sure how to uh, upload the firmware. Like it's like uh, uploading Windows. It's like uploading Mac OS. Uh, we show a lot of that on the channel. Show how to make bootable USBs. Those things. We want to check those out. But this is a good one. So now what we want to do is we want to install an update. 
we're not going to be installing a software update because that has nothing to do with what we're doing. We need to reinitialize the PS4 so it's going to be like a brand new operating system with absolutely nothing on it. So we need to initialize it. So how are we going to initialize it? So we're going to go ahead and go down here. So we want to do, um, you see there's two different this, uh, the styles, right? So there is the update for the PS4 console. This is the one I did. Don't do this one. See, this isn't a PS4 console update file. You want the PS4 console reinstallation file, which is going to do this. It will delete all the data, and it's basically like um, factory reset, if you want to call it like that. It even tells you how to do that here. If you want to go ahead and read that, I'm just showing you guys the steps anyway, which is great. It's actually really cool that they actually do this, but this is the part that actually is important, and is you obviously want to do it for the FAT32. You want to have a FAT32 USB formatted that way, and you want to create a folder called update. So we definitely want to do that. All right, so what we want to do is we want to create a new folder in our PS4 USB. We want to call it PS4. And, oop, not PS Money. We want to call it PS, <laughs> PS4. PS4 is money, though, especially it was back in the day. But now, or right, since we have that, um, now you want to call another folder. You want to make it called update. And it's very important that you use all capital letters here. So make sure you call it update. And now since we have the update, we have the file up. Now what we want to do is we want to install that file. And what we need to do now is what? We need to download it. And I'm going to be downloading it into the update folder. And so that's going to be a PUP file. And leave it the same way it is. It's called ps4update.pup. Leave it that way. If it's some for some reason something, something different, you want to make sure you change it to this title. And we're going to go ahead and save it. It shouldn't be too big of a file. I think it's like 400 megs. We'll see. Uh, oh, this one's a uh, okay. This one's a little bigger. The update file is 400 megs. This one over here is about a gig. So we'll be right back. We have pretty decent internet, so we'll be right back. It's already kind of doing it, but uh, we'll go from there. Did update? Okay, so the file is there. Now we can go. So the file is here. We can go ahead and check it out. Uh, looks like it's about a gig, give or take. So we're done with this now. Now we just ma always make sure you safely eject it. Um, make sure you do that. That's really important. So I know this is really scuffed, but just bear with me here. So when, you <laughs> whenever you have this, now you want to make sure you put your USB. I know I called it something different, but I formatted this one. So now you want to plug in the USB into one of the ports here. Okay, so you want to plug in the USB into one of the uh, two USB ports. And now it, it might be important even to have the second USB port because what the second USB port is going to be is going to be for your controller. Okay, so you want to make sure you plug that in. This is actually one I brought from my house. I use it for my PC. You can actually use this trackpad as a mouse, believe it or not. So now since you have it all plugged in, now what you want to do is you want to press the power button. You want to hold it. Once you hear the first one, just let it go. And now we're going to hold it until we hear a second beep. And that's going to put us in recovery mode. Okay, you hear that? Now you can let it go. Okay, so now it says connect with DualShock 4. You can just turn on your... Uh, DualShock 4, you'll see it blinking, and we want to hit the PS button. Now, I think everything else is blacked out. If you if you already have a, a hard drive in there, you want to reinstall an update, you could do it this way, but we can't do anything else. We have to initialize the PS4. So that's the whole point of the software. So we're going to go ahead and select that. And we should just go ahead and it should take care of itself. We're just going to let it go, follow the instructions, and see what happens. Okay, so now it's going to ask you if you wanted to initialize it. Again, now it's going to delete all data, but there's nothing on there anyway. Unless you're doing uh, another way of doing it, then stay away. So, all right, so now we're going to initialize it. That's going to be great. It shouldn't take too long, I guess. Looks like it's doing pretty well. So it's just formatting it for a PS4. Now it's going to be doing the system update, which it most likely has everything already built into it. So like uh, the latest update so I'm sure this will be fine so you just gonna install it now it's just gonna go ahead and do all the firmware stuff now if you have a PS5 it can be doing it the same way I'm sure it's very or it's a very similar way to do it you can go to the website they also do have a page for a PS5 if you're interested in that I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a very similar thing but probably if you're swapping an SSD for another SSD or adding storage it's probably a little different kind of pointless so I guess not okay now we're back on this page uh, I think it's gonna still go all right so let's click that button okay now I can set it up and everything looks to be good okay anyways guys I hope you guys enjoy watching us 
show you guys how to do uh, hard drive replacement on PS4 Slim and uploading the firmware and software to make it usable again. Um, for these ones, again, we always recommend trying to go with SSD. If you really can, it's always going to be more beneficial and there's going to be less problems with it. But mechanical drives for at least game systems really aren't too bad. But you see that I came in here for a mechanical failure anyway. So it's really interesting to really see. Anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please leave a like. It really does help us a lot. Subscribe for more content. And stay tuned. That's definitely one where we'll do a PS5 one in the future whenever, whenever we have a problem with that. Definitely stay tuned for that. It'll be pretty fun to do. We will show most likely how to like initialize it rather than do an upgrade because the rate does have an SSD in there and hopefully it won't really fail anytime soon. We really hope not. But um, thanks a lot for watching. Take care. Bye.